Welcome back to the Anachroschism. When we left off last time, the party was in a slightly different hotel room than they had first planned, but having acquired a second one through the use of a clever pseudonym... <laughs> I'll let the viewers decide. I don't remember what it even was. Agnes Whittlewood. It's going to be hard for you to your get that service. rebate if you're not going to remember what your character's name was then. I know! <laughs> Agnes Whittlewood, that's right. Yeah. Um, so they're across the way now. They've kind of set up a couple of measures just to make sure nobody comes to the room, or if they do, they might get alerted. Um, so you guys finally fall asleep, knowing that there's a big day ahead of you. Um, Grail, I'd like you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, just... Because you slept. Right now. <laughs> Would you get... You're having one of them. <laughs> yep. Sorry, it's it's loading because I had opened it and then I didn't actually launch the game. So just a sec. Please observe if there are gold shiny things or not. Yes, I know. Now I need to really pay attention to that because that is a thing. Um, if I even have a dream, who knows? I might roll super well. Uh, wisdom saving, you said? Yep. Oh, no. I mean... What is that? Uh, 21. 21. A much needed full night's rest without any troublesome or not troublesome dreams. In I fact. say, oh no, because I wanted you to have a nightmare. As, um, <laughs> I know. You're, you, <laughs> you have a little bit of time, uh, a little bit of trouble going to sleep in the very beginning just because your heart's still kind of beating a little bit faster than normal from the experience. But once you settle in, you realize how tired you are and seemingly... Nothing happens. I'd like everybody to make a perception check with disadvantage, except for Lena, who can make it regularly. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> here, come the, here come the sound effects. Oh uh, 18. 12. <laughs> 10. The same, 10. Uh, 3. <laughs> 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 Caress, distracted by what sounds like water droplets in the middle of the night and cow traps scattering across the ground. Um, so give me the first two again. I was distracted. I, I, so I had the bottom row. So Elters uh, is? Oh, a 12. 18. Okay. Um, everybody has a reasonably good night's sleep overall. Again, maybe it's just because you've been so busy in Lycidian, but uh, rest comes to you pretty well. And Isaac, uh, out of everybody. Just ever vigilant. <laughs> you stir a couple times across the evening and you kind of listen in because you have pretty keen senses overall and you still don't hear anything being disrupted. You guys had set that mechanism in place so that it would probably make a decent amount of noise if anybody came to that room or opened the door. As best as you can tell, going in and out of sleep, nothing happens. So, mm. following morning comes, sunlight fills the nice room that you're in. You all awaken with the full complement of stuff back to you, half your hip dice, not that anybody spent any, spell slots, etc. Um, and a new day awaits you. What would you like to do? I'm going to be up early. I'm going to be getting outfitted. It's going to be like a scene in Joel Schumacher's Batman where I'm loading up. I'm like tinkering the guns, getting them all ready. And, your, and your I'm bat like, visa card? Yeah. Yes, the bat card. <laughs> Cha-ching. <laughs> and uh, I say, uh, well, we have no time to waste. Uh, I think we should go right now. Who's with me? I'm with you. Are, are we not planning on going now? Uh, as far as I know, Karash, some of us are ready to go. Some of us are on the fence. Uh, Tessian's, there is no know. fence in the room. <laughs> Tessian straight, straightened his outfit. Uh, he's like, well, Lena and I do have things to see to this morning. Uh, this is, I guess, a, co a question for Chris. Is it, like, really morning? Or is it, like, like, how, how about how would you guess how long until we need to show up at the school and get stuff? It's like 7.30 morning. Not super early, but you haven't slept till 11.30. So, like, we should probably head over to the academy about now? I don't know. I mean, you, you have a you, couple hours. You have until noon, because aren't we waiting until the thing, the duel's going on to actually move? 
that was sort uh, of spoken about last time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, That's Karash, why. I'm gonna assume you said that uh, out loud, Karash. So I'm gonna say. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna assume we're talking about this off the table because we should remember that anyway. <laughs> well, no, but like I mean, that's a good point because I would bring up uh, Karash. I I believe that was the plan on the table, but the plans have changed now. I think. Uh, we may not have, we probably don't have the element of surprise anymore. Um, I just don't think we have a lot of time to wait. I think we need to move before there are any consequences. Um. And to Tessian and Lena, I don't think there is anything more pressing than this. This is why we're here in this town. One way or another, uh, I think this mission ends with what we do next. Tessian's like, this is not our mission. This girl's important and all, but we're in this city as well to assist our other goal, which Len and I did yesterday. We have a meeting this morning, and Lord, or uh, patrons know that the Shard could even assist us in this little attack of yours. It would behoove us to wait to see how that all goes. Uh, I know that wasn't your plan originally, but I still think you're rushing into this a little bit and I changing the plan. The time is for rushing uh, now. I think we tried playing it cool and scouting, and it has gotten us nowhere. We know uh, the most likely place that she is now. I say we move. And uh, this is why we're here. If you took advantage of the fact that we're here to achieve other goals, I think that was wise. But don't get confused. We are in this city to find her. If it wasn't for her, we would not be here. It was certainly why we came, I'll give you that, but it's not why I'm saying... And he kind of just trails off for a second. He's just like, Lena, I'll leave it up to you, I suppose. Uh, this is your journey, and the resources we're trying to gather here are yours to gather. This is your call, and I could go on ahead and speak to Stratum on your behalf, but if we're speaking to an expert on the Conatus, I do think you should be there. Yes, I I have to say I agree. I think I don't know how well this current mission of saving the girl is going to go in light of what has happened. I don't know if rushing is going to help. I don't know if waiting is going to help. I almost think it would be worth preparing for what's to come later. You're right. Maybe we can scout again. And then and when, I glare when they're at you again, uh, maybe they can double or triple the guards this time. I Why don't we should, call my father? Yeah. Let him know exactly what we're planning. That might make I'm, it go even smoother. I'm gonna glare at Isaac, like I'm kind of like, glaring. come on, man! Like that was unnecessary. But I don't say that. I'm just kind of like. <laughs> Look, here's the fact: we have the window to do this. Uh, are we going to do it or not? Uh, the 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 school is going nowhere. The people we're talking about to fund this thing are going nowhere. If you're more concerned about being late for an appointment than you are about potentially this girl's life, I can't help you on this or on the Canatus. Now, hold on just a second, Isaac. We talked about this last night. If they, would have, if they were going to move her, they probably would have already done so. We talked about this. I, I, think, I think we need to take a, a deep breath and... I think time is actually on our side right now. I don't think we need to rush into this. I don't think we actually should. What are we waiting for? What will change? I actually, I agree with Tessian in, that, in simply that I think we should see what pans out with the shard. I think we need as many allies as possible when we go into this. There's no guarantee he's even going to join. He this left is... our group already. That's true, but he has helped us in the past. We're taking an awful chance and waiting a, a long time for no guarantee at all. In fact, I would say it's unlikely. We waited all night. We have. That, we that's we only waited all night, Karash, so that two of our members could regain their strength. Uh, I didn't want to wait, but I'll agree. Uh, going in there in a potentially dangerous situation with two members weakened was not a good plan, as much as I didn't like waiting. But if we can get an extra, another, I think our chances would be even higher. 
it's not guaranteed, but I don't know how long this duel is going to last. Probably not long. Duels typically don't last very long. <laughs> the duel is at, uh, I should know this, but it's at noon, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's a good five hours from now, six, maybe seven until uh, we have the outcome uh, and we, we finish resolving the situation. But it would have taken 15 minutes to move the girl and lose her in the city last night if she was going to be moved. If they did it right away. And uh, maybe they did. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're doing it this morning. But... but and maybe just, they're doing it tonight. You don't know these things, Isaac. That's, that's the thing. You <laughs> joked earlier about your father about just letting him know you were coming. He already knows you're coming. He already knows you're here. The hole in the wall downstairs proves it. He doesn't they know were to... what we're doing. The hole yeah. in his face I have to it. believe that. If he did, things just don't add up. And, and if he does, then uh, that has implications I don't even want to think about right now. I just, I'm, I'm anxious. I, I know for a fact there's at least six guards that are rotating in and out of this place. They're perceptive. They're powerful, I think. I mean, they can walk without making a sound. They're, they have some kind of spells working for them. I'm worried that if we're going to walk into a hornet's nest. And I think we should be as prepared as we can be with as many people as we can be. But that's why we had the plan to... I think the plan is still okay. Separate the two. Get the information we need. She may not be there. But she may be. And to me, that is a risk worth gambling on. Whereas this shard is not at all. Find well, out then... if she's there. We can easily separate the two. And then we go from there. Luckily for you, Isaac. This isn't something you have to worry about. Lena's our leader. She'll make the decision. And like we agreed upon, we can follow it. Yes? Is that your decision, Lena, to let the fate, possibly the life of this girl, hang in the balance while we run errands? Well, you don't have to run errands with me or Tessian. You are free to do, p prepare whatever you would like to do. I, I just know that I want the Conatus to be successful for more reasons than one. And I think I need to be ready for that. And I, I think these errands that I will be running will be important in the long run, not just for the journey, but for, it will benefit us as well. We'll get funding. We'll be able to support ourselves more efficiently. I think that is valuable because as it stands, we are a small group. We, we're just not where we need to be. I don't know how to, can, to, 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 to get through to you. And he's very frustrated. He's like, you know, running his hands through his hair, just like just exasperated. There is no timetable on the Conatus and there is a timetable here. How do I spell that? And I'm like addressing all of you, even though, I mean, Karash is, is kind of on my side in some ways and whatever, but I don't care. I'm just like, I'm addressing, I, 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 exasperated again. I use that word already, like the, but that's the best word I can use for how Isaac is feeling so, right now. So Isaac, what, I'm, what we're looking at right now is Tessian and Lena are going to go do their, their errands. It's just going to be the three of us. The three of us are going to go in to a building with potentially six or more armed guards. Is that what you're saying or not? This is what we're going to do? This is a fool's errand. I'm trying to get the whole team together, but... It doesn't I, seem like that's going to happen. Team, you're right, is the wrong word. We're nothing close. There, this is no team. It's a bunch of people doing what they want for their own self-interest. Yes, if only some of us could have minded our own business back at that lake. I'll remind you, Isaac, that this timetable only exists because you guilted that poor father into wanting to step up 
against your father, a man I don't even know what kind of guilt or whatever it is your deal is with him, but clearly you have your issues with him. He was content and his daughter was safe so long as he complied and you convinced him not to. This timetable in this girl's life is in danger. Safe. Sorry, I'm in danger. Smile, <laughs> Isaac is not smiling. Uh, <laughs> safe. No. I, and I'm like, I stand up and I go to Tessie and I'm like, safe. I am the best chance this girl has at seeing her father ever again. Me and whoever else wants to join me. Tessie just looks at him in the eyes and Tessie is just like, you're the reason this girl will never see her father again. And the sooner you acknowledge that, the better. If you think that, then you are lost, Tessie. And I wish I wasn't in this case, but I didn't ask about the girl because it would help me find uh, these individual targets that I have and make the country better. I didn't do it because it was on my agenda. I'm doing what I think is right for the people of this country who are suffering. Can you say the same? And Tessin is like, I can, even if you can't see it. Then I don't know what to say. We're going to let the girl hang and maybe be killed. I... What do you say to that? Have, have you dealt with kidnappers before? No, Karash, have you? That, that is most of what I have done for two years. And what is your insight with this? If they were going to do something, they would have done it last night when they were discovered by two people. That's a fine assumption, but we don't know that for sure, do we? They, they could be very bad at their job. Or maybe they waited and uh, hunkered down until they received a backup the next day. Maybe they were awaiting orders uh, from my father or whoever's in charge. Can you tell me with 100% that neither of those or any other infinite possibilities are the case? In for what? There, my point, Karash, is there's a lot of things that could be happening. Can you guarantee that what you said is what's happening? No, but no one else wants to go. So you and I can knock on the door? Uh, Tessian is just like, look, Lena's made a call. You're either going to stick with it and respect what we've got here, and we'll move forward for good or ill or not. Is that your call, Lena? Is this your order? I, I just don't know. I, I don't know if we have any other good options. I don't know if going now is going to help. I don't know if going later is going to help because what? they could have easily done something last night, and we would have no. We we would we, we would have no answer for that. What does going now hurt? Well, it would hurt our team if not all of us go I, i'm just thinking if we if we are allowed to secure funding and make sure that we are prepared then maybe we can all go together during the, the duel we can my my point is what hurts going now can't we get the funding after was did, did they say the offer was off the table at 9 a.m well i would i would assume that it would be if we just didn't go we promised that we would be there at a certain time in the morning and i i think we should stick to our word it will be beneficial and this assumes of course that we make it to the meeting in one piece yes my my point being isaac that if we do this now it's possible that we are injured haggard who knows how many connections your father has we could have the entire city hunting for us the very least, we should try to get what we can before this whole city turns upside down because we go poking the hornet's nest. My point is, and this will be the last thing I'll say on this, is we may only have one shot at this, and it may be right now. Are you willing to risk putting this girl's life on the line? And I am looking at Lena. I think for a moment... And I say, well, it is 
poorly as my stealth mission went last night, I fear I may have already endangered her life. So I suppose that's going to have to be a responsibility I accept. A burden I accept. Don't just accept that. Do better. If you fail, and you will fail as we all do, try again. Don't just quit. I just kind of shake my head and lower my gaze. Well, I hope you figure this lesson out before it gets anyone else killed in the future. But uh, the, it's getting later in the morning. You all should go run your errands. Wouldn't want to miss your <laughs> diplomacy and funding. I'm going to get up and just walk right out of the room. Not even going to acknowledge him. <laughs> Uh, Tessian will look to Grail and Karash and say, you're welcome to join us if you wish. And he'll follow Lena. Um, I nod as Tessian leaves, but I don't follow. Are we going to go knock on the door? I don't know. This, uh, I... I'll tell you this, Grail and Karash, I, uh, I appreciate you at least giving this a thought, at least considering going with me, but... Without a full group, it changes yes. things, and, and, and I don't know if you feel comfortable going. Uh, if you don't, I won't force you to go with me. I, Isaac, I think you need to rethink, because the reality is that we're down two people now. There's three of us. We have, there's not enough. There are not, there's not enough people to deal with what I think is there, and we really need to reconsider. I don't think you should go alone. I, Lena and I did that last night. I almost got myself killed. And I don't say that lightly. I think we really need to take this seriously. I know you're taking this seriously. I'm not saying you're not, but given the current situation, we need to rethink this. I, ne next character I build is I'm going to be this fucking stubborn. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I respect that, I really do, and I understand where you're coming from, but um, I have to do what I have to do. The... No. Isaac, that's... You're walking right to your death. You cannot do this. Now, if you, wanna, if you want to go scope out the place and, make, and see, kind of what Lena and I did last night, but just to see where things are at this morning, because I guarantee you things have changed... That might be beneficial, but again, I thought that last night, and I, it almost it may have potentially ruined the entire mission. So, I just don't think you barging in there no, is going to do any. No, i the door down as much as I would well, love to. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I thought maybe you were thinking about it. And... No, I mean, uh, Grail, I like living. I do. Uh... I know, but sometimes I wonder, Isaac. <laughs> but my point is, I'm going to go and I'm going to figure this out. And it's not going to be a, a mission to scout the exterior and see what I see, it's going to be how can we best figure out if she's in there or not? And if she is, how can we best address it? And if oh. I have to go without our illustrious leader and her advisor, then, then that's fine. I'll do it alone. You don't have to do it alone. I'm like getting kind of frustrated at this point. It's like, I'm kind of like gesturing at Karash and myself. I'm like, we're here to help you. I just don't want you doing anything rash right now. It's, uh, it's a little rash. Uh, unfortunately, it's not your fault, but our hand is... Uh, fuck, what's the saying? Uh, forced our hand? Yes. Yeah. Events force our hand. And now we have to deal with the consequences. I appreciate you trying to scout. They're very vigilant. It didn't work out. Well, now this is what we have. I know. But what we might have is nothing, a big old goose egg. And so I think we just need to take it seriously. <laughs> Crash his face! Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I just think we, we need to be very cautious. Very, what, very what cautious. What do we wait for? Maybe we wait. don't wait. Let's go. Let's go now. That's what I'm saying. I didn't leave to go with Tessian and Lena for a reason. I'm I going to the door. If you're both, I'm like a little taken aback. I'm very grateful 
to both of you, and I'm a little emotional. Uh, <laughs> well, you did just say that you weren't going to just bust the door down. I literally thought that's what your plan was. And now that oh, you said it's I not. To be careful, especially with my friend's life's on the, the line here, but. I'm going to go check the other apartment while these two continue talking for what seems to me to be no reason whatsoever if we've already made up our minds. Okay. Okay. That's fair. Uh, so, Lena, with surprising strength, having pushed the couch out of the way, the door on her way out, the pathway is now clear. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Yeah. You guys, you guys started the following scene, so I wasn't going to interrupt and say it, but yeah, you guys had to shove a couch out of the way on your way out, but you did, Lena. Surprisingly, again, doesn't really fit her figure, but in, a, in her whatever emotion it might be, that's her call. But it's just <laughs> slides the couch over out of the doorway. So now, Karash, as you go over. Uh, make an investigation check. Oh, this will go well. Oh, you're fine. You have to roll good <laughs> one of these sessions. Oh, no, I don't. No, I don't. Hey, that's not bad. What is it? 13. 13. Um, kind of... Negative two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Making your way across the hallway, the other room appears to be as you left it last night. As you kind of open the door slowly, you can feel it brush up against those bottles. And you try not to like knock them over, but you can. There's a click, like a clinking noise as you just push the door into them briefly, and you can kind of peek your head in inside and still see the ones on the windowsill as well. The room appears to be undisrupted. Okay. Uh, thank you, Cord, and I will put everything back the way it was. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is still a symbol drawn on the door. So you put everything back. So I'll clean the the thing off as I leave. Okay. <laughs> And uh, then head back to the other room. Oh, now I'm saying I'm waiting in the hallway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, you guys are um, leaving the room. Yeah, I'm actually going to, like, as, as Crash leaves to do the whole thing, I'm definitely going to, like, since it's just Isaac and me, I'm going to reach out and put my hand on his shoulder again. And I'm going to say, we're here for you. We're not, we're not, we're on your side. That means a lot. I I don't know what to think. Uh, I don't know if I believe in this mission anymore. I don't know if I can continue supporting a leader who would make this decision when given these two choices. Uh, but for now, there's no point in thinking that. We have a mission and it needs our focus. I mean, you have to understand that their priorities just differ from yours. I, I don't think it's necessarily like a, a, a moral um, distance that we share. It's just, it's just how it is. And I, I understand you're struggling with this. I really do. But I think, it, I think it'll work out. I mean, it's going to work out one way or another. And whatever happens in this next day or so, I think it's going to be very telling. But let's, let's just see what we can find. And go from there. Focus at the task at hand and yes. progress from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Karash, are you ready? <laughs> I'm out here. <laughs> I'm ready. I, I suppose that's a yes. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Karash is shouting attacks. Everyone from every room to come out. No, it's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who's out here? Let's kill him. Um, so you guys make your way out of the room. I'm assuming head out of the inn and start making your way south to the trolley. The trolley. Uh, do we do we see them leaving? Where are we exactly? Did like I don't know where Lena went. Did Lena just go downstairs and like want to stew for a bit? Did were we gonna have breakfast? Did we just leave? I guess is my question. These are great question. I know. <laughs> uh, we were about well, to check in okay, with that group, so, so I'd love to know. <laughs> I probably would have at first gone downstairs and been like, I'm just going to leave and do the thing. And then I would have stopped and been like, okay, well, I should probably like calm down for a second and think maybe get some breakfast, maybe talk some things over first before we go. So then I'll stop downstairs. Okay. Uh, so do you like grab a table or something? Sure. I'll have sat in a corner somewhere probably. Um, well, Tessian will join you and order some breakfast. So I guess then the follow-up question is, do we see everybody leave? Probably. Okay. Yeah. I imagine that conversation uh, goes on for another 10 minutes or so, which I think is more than enough time for you still to be down in the lobby as they go through. 
Um, Tess, does does Lena notice them? Tessin looks to see if Lena notices them leaving. Do I notice them? <laughs> Probably. I yes. mean, <laughs> do I need to roll you a check? Have, you have the highest passive perception in our group. Yeah, I was gonna but... say oh. you'd have to be real deep in thought not to, because yeah, you're no, the most uh, receptive person in the group. I'll see And him. you know them. It's not like it's a weird target you're keeping an eye out for. It's familiar people. Yeah. I'll so, notice. Very subtle. Sure. Yeah, you can see them coming down the stairs. And after they step out, I just kind of sigh. My shoulders sag a little. Um, if we notice them, I'm going to wave. As <laughs> the diplomat. Ernest yeah. Crash. <laughs> I'll stop by on the way out and say, we're going. Uh, this girl needs someone fighting for her, and we're going to go figure it out. I suppose this is your last chance, but I don't see you changing your mind. Tessian doesn't say anything. He just looks to Lena. I just... I... God, what do I do? I just give you a nod and say, okay. I have to respect your convictions, if nothing else. Just be safe, please. I don't need your well wishes. I just wanted to let you know. Damn. Uh, That's cold as fuck! And uh, I sigh. And then just look away. Uh, love you, Kayla. <laughs> you too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, um, and then I'm going to continue on. I'll, I'll, I'll give Tessian a look. And it's not like a glare or, or um, anything even like negative. It's kind of, I don't know, like... As much as you can convey, I wish you would decide something else through a look. Uh, a little sad, I guess, but it only lasts a second, and then I'm focused back on, on what we're doing. Tessie just nods at everyone leaving. That's sort of a best of luck. Yeah. Well, here we go again. In a in a D and D campaign where the party's never together, whose group whose group would like to go first? Um, I think uh, let's let's have us go first for a second. I think that makes I, more um, sense. Absolutely agree. As uh, Tessian gives a few minutes after they leave, he just kind of waits to see if he can get Lena's like if she says anything out loud, kind of read her features. You know, once we get like a breakfast or whatever, he wants to kind of see how this is hitting her. It's sort of his thing. Um, I don't look happy. <laughs> I will say that. Um, pretty quiet, just keeping my eyes low. It's probably... um, and eventually he is, is, you know, we get breakfast. He, he kind of speaks up. And he's like, to be honest, I think you made the right decision. I think keeping our eyes on the long-term goal here is the right call. And, uh, I think being able to ignore the, um, well, the plight of one girl is not easy, but it's a necessary lesson for people that are going to have far more lives in their hands. That said, I will say that sometimes as a leader to support the people that you are there to lead, you have to stoop to their level and save them from their own mistakes. I applaud your patience with Isaac over all this, as I'm sure he must be frustrating. But if you'd like, we could always send a missive to the school. Let them know we may be late. We could always tag along. See how things go under Isaac's ever so careful hand. I'll leave it up to you. I, I, uh think for a moment um, and then I say well I suppose I'm thankful to you that you think I made the right call it feels like I'm just making enemies right and left um, it, do you really think we could do that give the school and the uh, uh, what was the guild stratum 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 think we could give them a uh, wait, wh what did you call it <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> Like, a notice that notice. would be late. Okay, yeah. Like, do you really think that would be okay? Because I, as much as Isaac didn't want to hear it, I am concerned if they're going to be going there alone. I was I was there last night. They are very 
those guards are extremely perceptive. And um, uh, I just kind of, I'm kind of at a loss for words now. Tessie's just like, well, it's not exactly polite, uh, and we did sort of. Um, well, I'm trying to think what's the word here. Uh, well, you like intrude on them impolitely. I can't think of the word right now. But um, he's like, well, we did sort of uh, impose upon them the other day with this deal of ours out of nowhere. But um, it is sort of a once in a lifetime opportunity. I might be able to smooth things over. I do know Professor Corbin and everything. I don't know. It doesn't start us off on the right foot with them, but having most of our party alive may be more important in the long run. Yes, that, that is my concern. I... Do you think maybe I should... I don't know what to do. I don't know if, if I should go to the meeting and then you go catch up with the team or if I should go and you uh, I just want to do what's best for everyone and I'm finding that's been very difficult to do we're also very strong willed <laughs> well sometimes it's not about what's best that's always good don't get me wrong that should usually be our priority uh, that's well sometimes what matters more is what you can live with what feels right, even if just in the moment? What can you speak to later when someone asks you why'd you do it? What can you look them in the eyes and say with conviction that you did because you knew you had to? Even if it's leave one child to her fate while you look towards the future, if that's what you believe is the right course of action here, we'll do it. We'll finish our breakfast, we'll leave, we'll talk to Stratum, we'll go forward. If you'd rather stand by Isaac and his stubbornness and stupidity and, dare I say, suicidal attempt at saving one life, we can do that as well. It's up to you. I will support you either way. That's what I feel I should be doing here. And what I will be able to say with conviction is the right call either way. Didn't Question tip is, your hand at all, did you? <laughs> uh, so I, I, I think on it and then I say, well... I feel like I, I can't afford not to think about the long-term journey that this is going to um, turn into. I, 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 think, I think I'm going to go to that meeting with you, and perhaps if we finish early, I can go and assist everyone. But Okay, then. We'll finish our breakfast and go from there. So, so that, that's what we do. You finish your breakfast, and then I assume you start making your way back to the West District of Lycidian. What is yes, breakfast? Sir. Um, I don't know. I probably have like a little bowl of fruit, like a a cinnamon roll, probably. You know, maybe like I don't know, some water, maybe some orange juice, some leg of Sophia. <laughs> yes. Fucking tears. <laughs> yeah, drink them in <laughs> for, that, for that extra bit of saline you need in the yeah. morning. Mm, a, little, uh, a little salty. Tastes like the cheers of a, of a child. <laughs> child. <laughs> Quick, use those to scry on her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you guys make your way back, and you already know where you're headed now, having kind of been through the area yesterday. But it's pretty easy for you to make your way back to the building uh, building that houses Stratum, and. Inside is a familiar face and an inf an unfamiliar face, an infamiliar face. Uh, you see uh, Rolf Woodleaf, who was there about this time yesterday when you happened to stop by. And there's also a very weathered-looking elderly rock gnome. Has short, straight, kind of Trunks-esque white hair, but thinner, more sparse. Um... And even just from a quick glance, you can tell he's got somewhat milky blue eyes that you can pretty quickly ascertain are probably riddled with cataracts. Um, dressed well, like fine vestments. Uh, but he's short by rock gnome standards. Now, I mean, Len is not especially familiar with any of those. And Tessian, you've only seen a handful in your lifetime. But still, you know gnomes in general. This guy has shrunk even by those admittedly already low standards. 
And is that, a, is that a pun? Sure. And even as you walk in, Rolf addresses you. He says, "Ah, welcome." I have to admit, I thought there was a chance you wouldn't come at all. Would have been a hoax. Tessian's gonna still defer to Lena here uh, in this particular instance. Okay, uh, and I'll just smile and say, "No, I can assure you, it's no hoax." At this point, upon hearing your voice, the rock gnome's eyes turn to you, sort of. They're in the direction of the voice. They're not really locked onto you as you look at him. You can see they're uh, over your shoulder, maybe. You know, they're thereabouts, but they're not quite right. Um, but as he hears your voice, he goes, So, this is the one, then? Uh, yes, I was chosen for the Conatus. you have to forgive me asking, but uh, you don't appear to be 20 feet tall. Uh, <laughs> No, no. Us wood elf, we don't get that tall. <laughs> that is just a, uh, what's the term? A myth? A, 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 a tall a, tale. Tall tale, there we go. A tall tale. <laughs> and you get kind of a chuckle out of him. He goes, ha, yes, quite. Well, I want to know all about you. Tell me, what was your life like? How did you get here? Where are you going? You have to understand... I thought the 20 foot thing was nonsense, utter nonsense. It sounds ridiculous on the surface, but even after all the time I've tried to hear tale of what goes on with the Conatus, I'm still lacking in information as well. Uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised that he wants to know everything, so I'm just going <laughs> to uh, try to keep it brief and just say, well, I, I came from the sown wood. We started traveling uh, a few months ago. Uh, I, w I had lived in the sown wood my entire life prior to this. I had never left, so exploring this... The, the continent has been very interesting and, and uh, informative. Uh, we don't have a ton of information on the Conatus ourselves. I simply know um, we have a location that we need to get to, the Shrine of Zenithra. And then from there, I, I assume I will receive more visions or insight into where to go next. Ah, yes. So you have not yet started the journey. I understand. Yes, this is perfect then. We can chronicle the whole thing. And this is the point at which Rolf kind of chimes in. He's like, well... That was the idea behind the arrangement. Yes, it's not only an opportunity to get insight into a rare find indeed, but potentially the entire journey, as it turns out. And he kind of chimes back in. And he goes, oh. all right, well, tell me this much then. And he takes a step towards you. He doesn't want to seem threatening in that step, but he, it is a little overeager in its nature. Like it, <laughs> It's quicker than you expect for someone of this age. You can quickly tell the excitement here. And he says, well, there must be some draconic characteristics to you then, right? Yes, I... Everything I've researched tells me that there's some connection to draconic lineage. Do you have scales? Do you have those eyes with the, the slits in them? I, <laughs> some people I've heard have scales on their skin that they can manifest. Uh, what, what is your particular quirk? Uh, well, yes. Um, I, I don't have any scales, but I do have a small dragon form that my grandmother refers to as the fable deer that I can transform into. Fable deer. I've not heard of this term before, but... It's interesting to me, yes, interesting indeed. Would you be willing to show it to me? Of course. Uh, and then I'll transform right then. <laughs> okay. Um, you get even more excitement from the rock gnome and a bit of surprise from Rolf. Not like shock or horror or anything, just kind of like, oh, well, even, even though every step has allayed my fears that this is some kind of prank or something, like this also seems to fit this idea that you might actually be the person for this journey. And the, 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 the only thing that you get for about the next minute is the rock gnome steps a bit closer. He's still not trying to invade your personal space, but he's now at the point where he can almost see. He's actually locked on to you, and he's just kind of looking you over. He's like, splendid, splendid, yes, of course. Oh, such fine colors on the scales on this side, yes. And he's just kind of taking you in. It's almost a little off-putting, but it seems well-intentioned. I'll just try to stay as still as possible so he can just keep looking and uh, I don't want to, like, make any sudden movements or anything. He says, well, Rolf, I mean, I, I don't blame you for being cautious. It seems like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, but at the very least, it's a convincing lie. But I don't think that's the case at all. And Rolf says, well... 
If you believe in it, you're the closest we have to an expert. If that's the case, I'm prepared to go through with the business we discussed yesterday. And he's kind of looking at both Testing and Len at this point. Um, and Testing is like, well, uh, not to rush things, but we do have quite a journey ahead of us. So the sooner we can get started and get information, feeding back to you guys, the better for all involved, I would think. At this point, Rolf kind of reaches behind this countertop and produces atop of it a fine-looking scroll that is wrapped up with a very nice ribbon around it. Um, and what appears to be a contract of sorts, Tessie, and you're at least familiar enough with the business side of things to understand what this is on the surface. Um, go ahead and make an investigation check. We sell our souls. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the devil. I love metal. A 10. All right. Uh, you just kind of scan it as quickly as possible, knowing that you are sort of on the clock, and it's also, you know, you could sit here for an hour and look at all the fine details, but it's not that long of a contract. Um, everything appears to be on the up and up. Payment is essentially listed as being on a case-by-case -case basis. It's based on information. So the better information that you provide, the more help it is to the Archaeology Guild, the more your compensation might be. It doesn't really speak in any specific terms as far as what that amount is, but in general, it sort of goes along with what he told you yesterday. Um, it's also not binding. So it's not like, do this or else. Um, there is a bit of a note about how if you don't provide any information and don't return the scroll, there could be negative consequences but besides that you're not required to do anything you're not like locked into you don't do the whole Cornetus' journey you're gonna die you know it's all pretty much on the up and up and it seems to be very voluntary which is fitting for a guild that deals with uh information and not other means um testing doesn't want to look for anything regarding representation like how does that how do uh, like does the does the contract stipulate like say our relationship to stratum as far as like guild structure or anything of that sort uh there's nothing about it on the initial level and if you ask rolf about it he essentially explains to you that there are ways to advance within the guild and even become a proper member if you so desire but it's sort of a tentative arrangement in the very beginning and that even if so people know about the shrine and he mentions like the shrine is an ether even if that part of it goes well and you document it that might be the point at which you can discuss looking to come out of the fold and the additional benefits that might entail so at the beginning, no, it's kind of a, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. So there's nothing explicitly in the contract about it, but he does explain there are mechanisms in place. Okay, so that, that's fine. Uh, Tessian says he understands it's a sort of trial by fire, not really, but it's, 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 we're on a trial run, essentially. So that's that's fine. Um, and he explains any of this to Lena if she cares. I don't know if she's reading the contract. She really should. She's probably the one signing this, but yeah. Yeah, I should probably turn back into. I, I will turn back into my uh, human form, so I can properly read it and then sign it. Um, you hear disappointment from Inahani, the rock knight, the rock gnome. Oh, <laughs> oh, I, well, I understand. Can't stay that way forever, but <laughs> truly was an, an honor to see it. Thank you. And then you can go look at the contract. Uh, this is kind of an unfamiliar thing to you. <laughs> Locality yeah. and issues of contract and all that are not exactly things that you've encountered at this point, but they're still words. You understand them. It's not like it's completely foreign. Um, so you kind of give it a look as well, and nothing really sticks out to you as being out of place either. Cool. Okay. Then I will uh, sign the contract, and I'm assuming it's cool if I hold on to the magic scroll. Yeah, and as soon as you complete the signature, he picks up the scroll from the counter, hands it to you, cool. and he says... So essentially, once you unravel this, any messages that you transcribe in it will be delivered to us. And after 24 hours, the messages will fade and the scroll will go back to being blank. And then if you submit any other ones, they'll come through as well. It's basically once per day, you can draw, you can write, you can send any, any manner of message to us and anything that we can find that will be useful, we'll document in our own library and we'll see how the arrangement goes. All right. Well, thank you very much for your help in all of this. I know it was a bit short notice, but we do appreciate your assistance. Well, I mean, I hope you'll forgive my caution about it, but again, I <laughs> there have been occasionally, and <laughs> you can speak to this more than I can, in honey, but there have been people who would look to exploit this, but I think the stories are so far-fetched that they quickly unravel. So the idea of one presenting itself was a surprise, but it would be a tremendous help for the community and for, I believe, the world as a whole. 
Tessie doesn't want to look over this scroll. Like, what are roughly its dimensions? How durable does it look, I guess, is a question. Uh, I'm assuming you hand it to him, Lena. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, Mine! <laughs> it definitely is sturdier than your standard paper. Um, it, like, <laughs> you pick up a normal scroll, it feels like you could tear this without any difficulty whatsoever. This feels sturdier, more well-built. Uh, it unravels to be something like a foot wide by almost four feet long. Okay. So a decent size, nothing tremendously huge. It's not like a big canvas to paint on or anything, but enough that you could definitely be writing, I don't know, a thousand words plus on it and still have room or several drawings if that were the case. So it's reasonably, a reasonable size scroll. And yeah, you can just kind of feel it. Just being familiar with some magic to your own extent, you kind of know intrinsically like, yeah, there's definitely something going on with this. This is not a usual scroll. Uh, Tessie will ask, uh, uh, well, obviously, uh, we will do our best to protect the scroll here, but we're not entirely sure what we'll be facing. Uh, how durable is this, uh, environmentally at least? Water, heat, does uh, it have any magical protections upon it? It does, yes. It's, they're somewhat limited, but it will handle at least relatively sturdy nature of your journey. It'll be enough to withstand some flame, enough to withstand some water. You can't submerse it for a day on end and without probably some negative effects. And if it's cast into a, a, a fire for hours, it would probably wilt under the pressure. But it'll, it'll, it'll withstand some abuse. And then Tessie and nods. Uh, do they have like a, a container that they're handing uh, it to us with or just the scroll itself? Just the scroll itself, which also kind of lends you to believe that what he's talking about, the sturdiness of it, makes sense. It's not like in a special case that protects it. It seems to be protected of its own nature. But it does look kind of fancy, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, Tessie's going to make a mental note that we need a case for it that looks really dirt cheap so people don't try to steal it. Okay. So. Should be pretty easy to find when you have the chance. Uh, so other than that, I mean, he gives Lena a nod. Uh, just uh, this all looks good to him. Uh, then I'm gonna give the nice gentleman a bow and thank them for all of their assistance. Okay. Uh, Wolf returns the bow, and the older gentleman goes, "Yes, well, remember, any honey carcasses, kihani yaksis, if you need anything." I don't have a ton of knowledge about this other than what I've heard, but please, you know, if you come back to the city, I'd love to hear the tales firsthand. I, even the details you provide may not be enough to really keep my interest, but I'll do the best I can with what I'm given. He seems, again, just very excited about the whole thing. <laughs> yes, we'll have to visit and tell you all about it. Well, I look forward to it then. You guys head out? Uh, yeah, Tessie is, you know, he bows to them and shakes their hand and says, you know, it'll... It's a pleasure doing business with you, all that stuff. All the pleasantries. Okay. And now the question is, where are you headed? <laughs> that is the question. I had to know that before we switched to the other group. Yeah. I turn to Tessie and say, you do not have to come with me on this. I, I, I just feel obligated to make sure nothing happens to them. I, I want them to be safe. And uh, do you have the scroll? Where are you gonna? What are you gonna do with the scroll? Like, do you have you tossed it to anybody? Are you gonna keep it on you? Uh, I was thinking I could keep it on me, but I mean, I don't have to by any means. No, that's fine. I was just wondering where it is. Um, Tessin just said, "Well, uh, I would like to keep you safe. So if you're going to assist them, that's where I'll be." Thank you. Start making your way south. Yep. Yes, I guess so. Assuming they gave us decent enough direction. Oh no, Len has been. So yeah, I sure have. Could have been a problem for your group, but nope, Lena's been there now, so she knows where to go. Other group, 